Hey guys, it is Cal, and for today's video, I'm going to be answering all of your guys' questions. I posted a photo on my Instagram about a month ago during winter break, and I was like, please ask me anything, I'm filming a Q&A. I never got around to filming that, so now I'm answering all of those questions now. And through this, you guys will be able to get updated on my life, kind of where I've been, what I've been doing. So I'm excited to get into it. If you do want to follow me on my Instagram, it is just at Callie Kaiser. But yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys asked me, and here we go. To start the Q&A, please do more of your editorial shoots at home type of videos. It was super helpful. Love this photo. Thank you so much. I am going to be filming another shoot with me at home type of vibe video, so definitely look out for that. I'm excited. Do you have a Depop? Yes, I do have a Depop. I'll make sure to link down below in the description box if you guys are looking to buy any of my clothing that is like gently I really haven't worn a bunch of stuff that I'm selling on there it's mostly new with tags or new without tags how do you keep your fair skin looking so smooth I love skincare so much I have super dry skin so I I'll just show it to you you guys need to see this serum because it's still so dry and it's still winter right now it's only the middle of February these products have saved my skin so much. It is insane. So this is the Volition Snow Mushroom Water Serum. You do a pea-sized every morning and night underneath moisturizer. This water serum is insane. Um, so I can wear foundation. I have no cracked skin, no dry patches. I'm not kidding you. I got this at Sephora. It is a little bit pricey, but it is worth every penny. I've never had a product work so good for my skin. And then the moisturizer I'm using right now is the Kate Somerville Dry Skin Saver. This is amazing as well. I love this. These two together have worked so well for me. So if you're wondering why my skin has looked good lately, that is the reason. Makeup item you cannot live without. Lip liner. I really am obsessed with lip liner lately. And my favorite one is Kevin Aquan in the shade Minimal. That's the best lip liner. I'm wearing it right now, actually. What are your plans after graduation? I definitely want to stay in California for sure. I will be doing YouTube full time, which I'm really excited that I can finally devote all of it to YouTube instead of school, 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 YouTube, school, 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 YouTube. Um, LMU is my favorite school that I've been to. I'm a senior and I get to walk in May with my cohort, but I have to stay an extra semester fall through December of 2019 only because I transferred twice before I went to LMU. I went to U of A in Tucson, Arizona, and then I went to SMC, Santa Monica Community College. Also, LMU is my favorite school that I've ever been to. It is unreal. The humans there, the professors there, the community is insane. I am, in, I am, I can't, I'm speechless. I love that school so much. I really take things year by year. I'm not like, oh my gosh, five years from now, this is exactly what I want to be doing because we change internally our whole lives. I have no idea what I want to be doing in five years. So I really am going with the flow and I'll be working full time on YouTube and hopefully some other exciting things come my way, but I won't really know my full potential until I graduate because school takes up all of my time. When did you meet Hayden? P.S. I love you. I love you too. Thank you for um, leaving a comment. So Hayden and I met, we've been dating for almost four years in May. And I met him on spring break in um, Marco Island, Florida, which is so funny because he actually lived four houses down across the street from me. He was my neighbor in my neighborhood. And I met him on spring break in Florida, which is just so funny. He went to the same high school as me. He was just one year younger than me. And he actually is a month older than me outside of school, which is funny. So I graduated high school, took a gap year, met him on my spring break gap year and he ended up being my neighbor. I can stand in my driveway and wave at him if he's standing in his driveway, which is so funny. But actually his family just moved to Denver, which is sad. So he's no longer my neighbor, but um, Hayden's at U of A right now. After I transferred out, he transferred in. And we've been doing long distance for four years in May. He's great, I just love him. Have you ever felt lost and confused about your future and how do you get over that feeling? I am so happy somebody wrote this just because I'm sure so many of you guys feel this way. I feel like this way right now. I'm so lost. I'm 22. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm a senior. Life is so overwhelming sometimes. Growing up is one of the hardest things that we do on an everyday basis. Aging is so hard. Adulting is so hard. Um, 2018 was not 
the best year for me at all. I can't say that it was all bad because I did have amazing moments whoa, throughout the year, excuse me. I am just taking life day by day. Um, what's really helped me is finding solitude in things. So if you are someone who needs self-care, like I need self-care or I lose my mind, solitude is a huge practice that I do on an everyday basis. I also will take baths with Epsom salt. Um, not talk to yourself, but you need to learn how to cope with your mind. The mind is so powerful, it's insane. I spend a lot of time um, watching movies or films that I am passionate about. I will play Xbox, I'll put on some Fortnite, or I just started playing Apex. Um, I find that I'm really grounded when I surround myself with really good people. So getting involved in things, kind of taking your mind away from, you know, up here, which never stops turning, and putting your energy into something that is very calming. My mom is awesome. She <laughs> has hormone imbalance as well. She'll paint to take away anxiety. Really whatever works best for you. I mean, this feeling is so natural, it's crazy. The women in my family have pretty bad hormone imbalance. So I've so I have struggled with anxiety for as long as I can remember and it only kind of gets worse the older you get so you need to kind of cope with that anxiety on an everyday basis. If you want to learn how to cope with that feeling, you need to listen to your body, your mind, you need to be eating every two hours. There are so many good things that you could do for yourself to kind of escape up here and I kind of go all over the place. I know that it's easy to edit what you say on YouTube, but I am a rambler for sure. Um, hopefully that answers that question. How do you react if somebody tells you you're too skinny? I literally hate that. Um, this skinny shaming is so sad. It's just as horrible as fat shaming. There is nothing right with judging somebody's body and putting prejudices on them and assuming something about them. I had no idea how bad skinny shaming is in 2019. I recently lost a bunch of weight in October, at the very end of September and going into like October 5th. I had salmonella poisoning for eight days. I ate either, it was bad, it was dirty meat. I ate pork bun and chicken fried rice and spicy scallion pork and chicken dumplings. And I literally woke up six hours later and I've never been so sick in my entire life. I lived on my bathroom floor for five days. I lost a total of 15 pounds total, but I lost 12 pounds within six days. I threw up straight for five of those days. Um, it was definitely the hardest sickness I ever went through. I really didn't expect to get emotional, but um, it was just so hard. Also, I'm such a crier, like, I cry all the time because hormones are insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly I'm still freaked out by what I went through. Um, my best friend Kellen, who's also my roommate, who I need to vlog more so you guys can meet her, but, uh, oh my gosh, I can't even talk. <laughs> Wow, it's so hard to talk when <laughs> you feel so much emotion, but Helen, she helped me through so much of it. She's amazing. Yes, so I am such an emotional person if you can't already tell, but when I had salmonella, I didn't eat a meal for eight days straight because you can't. I purposely would just, I mean, I drank coconut water for literally eight days straight just trying to get electrolytes and potassium in me and any other antioxidants that were on the bottle, but oh my gosh. Craziest, gnarliest experience ever. The pain of starvation was the most painful thing I think I have ever experienced. It just felt like I was dying. Like there was, oh my God, it was so painful. I mean, clearly you could see how it affected me because I lost so much weight so quick. And now it, it 
it really took me four months to get to where I am now, which I'm so happy. I find joy in the littlest things. I was taking Zipro, which is Ziproflaxin, I believe. Um, I was taking 500 milligrams to kick that out of my stomach to kill the salmonella. Um, so I was taking a antibiotic for three days, twice a day, and it was a medicine that weakened all of your muscles. I was bedridden, I couldn't drive, I was so weak. I mean, I, I was literally living on my bathroom floor for five out of the eight days. And my boyfriend was here for a few of those days. We had bought a flight ticket before. Obviously, I knew I was gonna get sick. And he helped me a lot. He was able to go to the grocery store, get me my coconut water and all that stuff. So he was here during the weekend when I was going through that, which, oh my gosh, I can't even admit. He's amazing. After the salmonella was gone and I started eating food again, it was so painful. It felt like I was eating rocks. Like my digestive system was so messed up. My intestines didn't have any of its good bacteria in it because the medicine just completely cleared out my system. And that medicine was the worst thing I have ever felt in my body. It just weakens me. I lost so much, mu like my, I'm so weak. I'm so weak. So I'm in Pilates now at LMU and that's been awesome. So if anyone asks me about my workout routine, I don't have a workout routine. I just do Pilates through LMU and it's every Tuesday and Thursday morning. But when I started eating again, it took me about a month to get to three to four meals a day just because um, the PTSD from having salmonella and then trying to eat again. This brain is so powerful. It will, it's just, wow. If anyone, you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've maybe had a really bad case of food poisoning. So yeah. Um, it's taken me four months to get to where I am now, which I'm finally so happy again. It took me a long time to love myself again because in high school I was not this small, but I was definitely small. Like my boobs went down two sizes. I lost so much weight. I mean, so many of you guys are worried about me through my comments on my Instagram, which is sweet. But back to skinny shaming. I have been skinny shamed by waiters. I've been skinny shamed by strangers. And then social media, I mean, if I'm putting myself on the internet, um, not asking for comments like that, but skinny shaming is not okay. So don't do it because you are just hurting others for no reason and you have no idea what they went through. You have no idea. And you can't just assume that everyone has an eating disorder. And also, sorry, this is so TMI. I am an open book if somebody asks me questions. <laughs> also, if anyone else went through this, it happens, like you're not alone. Um, and it just takes time. Our bodies need time. We live in a world of instant gratification and it's so hard to constantly keep up with that, especially if you are trying to focus on your health and wellness and happiness at all at once. Um, taking care of yourself is one of the hardest jobs. Losing that much weight, I wasn't used to looking at myself in the mirror. I hated taking pictures because I'm not used to being this small. I hate the way I look when I am this small. None of my clothes fit me. I can't wear any, I wear the same white jeans every single day because they fit me. It's so frustrating. So I'm just hoping that my metabolism just slows down for a minute so I can put on some more weight. But yeah, every chance I get to eat, I'm eating and I feel amazing. How do you handle a long distance relationship in college? Um, so Hayden and I have been in a long distance relationship, except for when we go home for the summers and then holidays and random breaks. And then I see him every single month, but, um, how do you handle a long distance relationship in college? Everyone's relationship is so different. You can't compare any relationship, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, anything. You really just can't. Um, but it's all communication and honesty. You can't bottle up emotions. You need to tell them exactly how you feel when you feel that way. I also think that if two people want to be together, there won't be that 
jealousy. If you want to be with that person, it's so worth it and you will make it work if you want to. Can you tell us your first kiss story? So Hayden was my first real kiss, first makeout. I was 19 it would, and it was when I met him on spring break in Florida. Um, we were on the beach and our friends were like, Callie, you should totally kiss Hayden tonight. He wants to kiss you. And oh my gosh, it's so, it's so funny. But um, I was so nervous. Oh my gosh. My heart was beating out of my chest. I wanted to ditch everybody and leave and go back to my hotel room just because I was so nervous. I've never had a, a guy be like, hey, maybe I want to kiss this girl. I don't know. Sounds so funny to say now because it's not that kissing isn't something to be nervous about. It's just exciting. Um, so we were on the beach and he asked to kiss me before he kissed me, but we were like walking off in the distance away from everybody because if you ever have gone to spring break in marco island florida kind of all the high schoolers and maybe some middle schoolers that are hanging out with people too everyone kind of meets on the beach at 10 p.m or 9 p.m and hangs out and just meets everybody so it was that situation so we were all hanging out at the beach and then he finally came up to me and was like hey do you want to take a walk maybe he said or he was just asking me like oh how was dinner with your family do you want to hang out over here and i was like yeah sure oh my gosh i was so nervous and he when he kissed me we just started making out on the beach and it was so fun and my cousin was there sammy who's now either 13 or 14. it's so hard to keep track of everybody's ages but she was on spring break with me then too and she's like i know you kissed hayden <laughs> um no it was so much fun for a first kiss experience and i'm so happy that it was with hayden what's your biggest tip for finding your personal style so <clears throat> this is a hard question because i don't know how i found my personal style it's kind of like my brain is like i want to wear that i like that i'm gonna put that on my body and i just love the way things coordinate together but of course i get inspiration from other people because i know someone asked who's your style inspiration and i really haven't thought about this question in a while only because when i was sick and everything i just haven't really been on top of my game with social media and style and shopping and fashion just because i was only focusing on my health I love the brand GCDS. I also love my style inspiration. I have not thought about this in a while. Um, I have no idea. Best places to find cool pieces cheap on sale. So I shop everything on sale. I shop in the sale sections on really dope websites. My favorite website is Farfetched, Opening Ceremony, Dolls Kill, Urban Outfitters. I love all of those and I shop all of like cheap thrifted stuff on Poshmark, Depop, Grailed, um, Vestier Collective is an awesome one. You just make an account and that's all designer thrifting, which is awesome. It's all authentic and online and oh, I mean GCDS is one of my favorite brands. They are definitely my style inspiration if I were to put my style inspiration to a brand. How do you balance eating clean, being in a relationship, doing YouTube videos, plus going to college, doing homework? I hope you have a great day. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely day. Um, thanks. I think that whatever you just said is one of the hardest things to do. Taking care of yourself, eating every two hours, doing your homework, going to class, and working alongside. You have to have good time management skills. I am a bit of a procrastinator only because... I love mental health days and I love self-care. So I'd way rather choose to do something that's gonna better my mood than be grinding 24 seven just because that doesn't work for me. Um, so how I balance that is I take time out of my day. Like let's say I wake up earlier just to sit in bed and relax for an hour, lay a lavender candle. Whoa, that was, I said candle, so weird. You know, just, Really little things are going to bring you happiness, especially if you're a very self-aware person, which I I am a very self-aware person. I am pretty sensitive to things too. Like I have to eat clean or I feel like crap. And school, I, I wouldn't say I'm an unreal student. I'm totally 
average B student just because I don't let school consume me. I also don't let YouTube consume me. I try and live my best life, but yeah, life is messy. So it's hard to always have everything balanced because I don't. I'm all over the place all of the time. I'm just 22. I'm still growing with you guys. Advice for someone in the middle of the college process and a little scared to be starting the next chapter of their life. Starting the next chapter of your life is going to be amazing. Change is the best thing. I mean, it's the only constant change. And college is not scary. Everyone usually has found themselves by then and they're so approachable, they're so accepting. You know, you can learn something from each individual person. It's so amazing, but wait, what was the question? I'm, I'm such a rambler. Um, so you're in the middle of the college process and you're scared to start the next chapter. I was terrified. I get nervous about the stupidest things. Yeah, you kind of just have to throw yourself into it, hands on, and run with it. Because if you don't do that, you won't surprise yourself and oh my gosh, it's amazing what you could do, what you could surprise yourself. College is not scary, I promise. It is one of the most amazing experiences you could ever give yourself. And if anyone is watching this that didn't go to school, you should go to school because I have made the re I have never made such unreal relationships. I've never been so independent. I've never been so proud of myself. Just being able to Yeah, I mean if you don't kind of, sorry, I'm all over the place. I have no idea what I'm saying, but I'm gonna move on to another question. What are your opinions on your popped blood vessels and how do you deal with them? So if you guys have never noticed, I have popped blood vessels on my forehead, under my eyes, they're all over my body. I have them all on my chest, which I don't think you can see from this far away. Um, they're on my hands. It's literally just my body genetics. And since my skin is so fair, it's just really easy to see those pop blood vessels. Um, they really never have bothered me. I don't really care about them just because they, they don't really bother me. I know a lot of people are like, what is on your face? But um, I love the one on my lip. I think it brings character to my look. I have gone to a dermatologist just to make sure that they're okay and um, this is normal. It's completely fine. I can get a laser facial if I want and it will kind of shrink the pop blood vessel. I just haven't done that yet. I might do that just because I've been getting more around my nose and eye and forehead area and that brings a lot of redness to my face and I don't really wear makeup on an everyday basis. So yeah, how does it feel to be a Midwesterner living in LA life? I love it so much. I love being from the Midwest just because even the people I meet out here that are from the Midwest, everyone is so humble and sweet. Not that that's not the case for people on the West Coast at all. Um, it's just, yeah, different personalities, different energy. I, I love the West Coast so much. So there's so many people in LA that are not from LA. So it's kind of just a melting pot as well. And it's so fun. Um, but it's nice to live near the ocean because I didn't grow up near a huge, huge body of water. Yeah, I live near Lake Michigan, back in Chicago, Illinois, but it's nothing like the ocean. How come you don't focus more of your time on YouTube anymore? So I already kind of shared with you guys why I had to take a break for health reasons. Just wanted to focus on my health and happiness, so that's why I wasn't waking up full energy ready to film. Also, you can't really get me to do anything that I don't want to do or feel like I want to do. So since I was focusing on happiness and health, I'm not going to pick up my camera and want to film a haul video because that's just not my headspace that I was in. When I was taking birth control, um, since my hormones are pretty unbalanced, I took birth control for six months worst six months ever. I did not work for me. My body was having a really hard time metabolizing the waste after the effectiveness of the birth control. Um, you know, there was just kind of depressive moments where I wasn't leaving my bed all day. I had the worst summer from it. And after I stopped taking it, I was able to feel how I normally felt again, which is so hard to explain and 
say out loud because nobody knows how you're feeling. It's, yeah, you can't, I don't know how to put words to express how I felt. All I know is I tried it, it wasn't for me. I'm so much happier now. What's your biggest career goal? Brianna White asked me this, I miss you. Um, thanks for commenting. So I want to create something that you guys are able to support me from. What a weird sentence. Um, so whether that's me creating my own bougie sweatpants line or just unreal cotton matching sets, I do want to create something, whether that's like a really cool version of my merch or a really cool version of my identity. I have no idea what will come up in the works, but I probably won't be working on something until I'm closer to graduation just because it's gonna take all of my energy and my full time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, don't forget to comment down below. I'm an open book. I love sharing things with you guys. And yeah, I don't wanna be surface level on here. I know sometimes social media may seem that way, but I'm an open book. Please ask me any questions and I will answer them for you. But yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Please don't forget to subscribe and I love you. Bye.